Take a space, which looks like a bunch of rectangles stitched together. That's a Euclidean space, much like the intuitive kind we experience around us. But if we zoom out, we see that these stitched rectangles are actually a sphere, which exists in a three-dimensional space. The sphere is a manifold. Because we can go back and forth between these states with ease, from a flat plane to a curved ball, they are locally homeomorphic. This is a crucial property, because there are certain spaces where, if you zoom in on them, they do not resemble a Euclidean space, and therefore cannot be manifolds. Anyway, what can we do with a manifold? Say we want to calculate distances on the curve of the manifold. What can be done? Say we have a manifold M, you know, for manifold. In order to measure the distance of the curve, we need to use a tangent space for a point P on the manifold. Say we trace a specific path on M, called gamma, through the point P. You can think of gamma as the trajectory of a moving point. This path is parameterized by T, meaning T is a variable, like time, that allows us to describe the position of the point on the path at any given moment. At a specific value of T, like T0, the point on the curve is at location P on the manifold. As this curve gamma moves through P, its velocity at P is not just about speed, but also direction. It's where and how fast the curve is moving at that exact point. This creates a tangent vector located precisely at point P, which for now we'll call it V. It's like if you were walking along a path and at a specific moment, you noted your speed and direction. That's what the tangent vector captures. This figure is a bit misleading because the tangent space doesn't literally look like a tangent plane, tangent to the manifold. It's something abstract. It can look like this when it is embedded in a higher dimension space, like we have here, which helps us visualize it. Essentially, this entire explanation just helps us get a good intuition of things. But manifolds can also exist in higher dimensions like n. So how can you possibly imagine a manifold existing or embedded in four dimensions? Or five? Or ten? Well, we can't. But we can zoom in on them. Not in the literal sense. Through applying functions on a particular point on that manifold. And work on it in the intuitive realm of a Euclidean space. See, we have a manifold m, but this time in n dimensions. If we want to pick a specific point on it, how would we know its location? Well, we actually need to create a sort of neighborhood of points, called u, which is formally called an open set. This implies that for every point in u, there exists a neighborhood around a point, which is entirely contained within u. We can pick a point within u and label it p, for point. Pretty straightforward. P has some room to move within U without immediately stepping outside U. So P is basically floating somewhere in U. Now let's convert or map U onto a Euclidean surface. Mathematically, this is represented as phi from U to Rn, where phi is a coordinate map that maps U homeomorphically to an open subset of Euclidean space Rn, meaning that it preserves the structure of the manifold locally. This setup makes it possible to do calculus and other mathematical operations in a more intuitive way because we are using the Euclidean space. On the original manifold, we have a curve that runs along it, gamma, where t, like time, or any other continuous variable, is the parameter. It's represented like this, and it's read like gamma is a map from t to m. Gamma is a function or a map that takes in a parameter t and returns a position, a point, on the manifold m. As we established previously, for each value of t, gamma t gives a point on the manifold. If t is thought of as time, then gamma t would describe the position of a particle or moving object on the manifold at time t. The arrow shows that the function is mapping, or sending, values of t to corresponding points on the manifold. In this curve, t ranges from the initial value a and the final value b. It's like starting at hour 0 and ending at hour 10, just as an example. All of this is expressed by t in a, b to m. Now, we want to imagine that we are walking along this curve, but not on m directly, but on the local coordinates. In other words, this mapping to Euclidean space we talked about earlier. We take gamma of t, the curve on the manifold m, 
and Phi, the coordinate map that takes points from the manifold and maps them to local coordinates in Rn. This gives us a compositive function, made of combining two functions together. When you compose Phi and Gamma, you're essentially translating the curve from the abstract manifold M to the local coordinates of Euclidean space Rn. So the function phi composed with gamma takes the parameter t and gives you a vector of coordinates in Rn, or the local Euclidean space. So finally, how can we compute the velocity of a point moving along the curve on a manifold, but express it in local coordinates? After applying the map phi, the curve gamma of t on the manifold is now represented as x of t in local coordinates. So x of t is a vector of coordinates that tells us where the point is in Rn, the local Euclidean space. The curve gamma of t on the manifold M is now represented in terms of local coordinates x of t with components x1 of t, x2 of t, and so on until xn of t in Rn. This is saying that x of t is a vector of n components, where each component xi of t represents one of the coordinates in the local Euclidean space Rn at time t. So, to recap, the velocity of the point on the manifold at time t is the rate of change of the position vector x of t with respect to the time t. In case you didn't know, we define velocity as the derivative of position with respect to time. The reason we use a derivative is that the velocity measures how quickly the position changes over time. The derivative gives us the exact rate of change. So, to find the velocity vector, just like the one we looked at in the beginning, Specifically at p, for example, we take the derivative of x p of t. It's because of this composite function that we can do calculus in curved spaces, since this is a function from the Euclidean space R to the Euclidean space Rn. I know this wasn't the easiest, and we all know how it can be super hard to find the right resources, especially when we want to study deep and complex topics. But this is actually possible from the comfort of your home. And that's exactly where Brilliant comes in. What I love about Brilliant is its ability to transform seemingly scary mathematical concepts into something easily approachable. Take for instance, vectors and derivatives, topics we've delved into right here today. Brilliant helps you grasp these concepts by guiding you through the fundamentals of differential geometry and calculus, making it all click with interactive content and visuals. And here's the best part. You can learn it at your own pace, revisit tough problems, or accelerate your learning whenever you feel like it. Brilliant makes it seamless, right from home, or anywhere you feel comfortable learning. So if you're eager to dive deeper into math or any other subject, Head over to brilliant.org slash debose to start your free trial or use this QR code. Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 20% off of your annual membership. This video was inspired by this article and this book. Link in the description. I know this was a lot, so in case you didn't catch everything, know that we've attached a PDF down in the description. Remember, that's the only way to learn math. By doing it and practicing by yourself over and over again until you eventually get it. If you like this video, check out this one. See you there.